Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So far, I have recorded two videos in my series about 2021 Release Wave 1. The first video was about generic updates and what's new in Dynamics 365 sales. And the second video, I discussed everything new in Dynamics 365 customer service. In this video, I'll be discussing all of the new features and updates for Dynamics 365 field service. Not all of the features were accessible for early access, but I do have a lot to report on. So let's dive right in. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the work order resolution details. And this is going to allow field service technicians to log one or multiple resolutions against a work order. In this particular case, you can see this on the booking form. So the way that this works uh, is there's actually two new entities that are being added to Dynamics 365. And system administrators can add records to the resolutions table. And then the work order resolutions is where a resolution gets tied to a work order. So as I just said, obviously when we're working on the field service mobile app, you can just go ahead to the service tab and that's where you're gonna see the newly added resolutions grid. And from there, you can just go ahead and add those resolutions. As you can see from here, you can also tie that to a work order incident in a customer asset. And then you would just pick a value from that resolution table. And that's how you can add that. So this is, this is pretty great. I feel. Then we also have some account address usability updates here. So if you open the account form in the field service app, now all of the fields that are related to the service address are showing in one field and that's called service address. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the composite fields that we had for address fields in the legacy interface. So obviously it takes up a lot less space, which is great. And it also makes it easier to read, right? Right. So you can just go ahead and then remove the individual address fields that you had on the form, which also cleans up the form a little bit as well. Now, when you click on edit, this is what you're going to see. You get this little pop-up window with all of those address fields in there, and then you can just go ahead and override or, or update any data in those address fields. Now, this feature enables knowledge articles on the Field Service mobile app, which means that field techs are now going to have access to the knowledge articles in Dynamics v65. So one of the first questions that I had about this is, OK, well, are these articles going to be available offline, right? Because a lot of our techs might need to update information in Dynamics 365 field service, and they might be offline when they're doing that. So absolutely, besides the ability to search and read knowledge articles, um, you can also link to an article when you're offline. And on top of that, you can even create new knowledge articles from within the application as well. So I think this is another great feature that they came up with. And you can see here on the screenshot, right? If you click on service again, you're going to have that area there that shows those linked articles. There's going to actually, there's a lot of updates to the new schedule board. And if you remember that one actually came out, if I'm not mistaking, 2020 release wave two, I believe. Anyways, there is um, a lot of new stuff here and it's, it's kind of amazing. So the first thing that they did is they added a weekly view and a monthly view as well. So here you can see a weekly view on the screenshot and you can see that 
you can expand right there's a little expand button there next to the resource and then you can kind of see the total time and then in parentheses you see three for Chris that means that she has three work orders and you can even see the start times on that as well so I thought that was a really nice way of, of rendering that information on the schedule board and then if you want to see the monthly view it's very similar right we're just now looking at the same data from a monthly perspective then we can now also view the map on the new schedule board and i really like the way that the map shows on the new schedule board but i'm kind of missing the ability to drag an unsche unscheduled requirement from the map onto the schedule board so i'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed that that's coming back because i i wasn't really able to do that and then we also have resource cards that are returning and i'm sure you're familiar with this but if you're not uh, that card actually shows information about the resource and if you want to bring up that card from the schedule board you need to go ahead and you just click on the resource and then you see here this view resource card and when you click on that you get all of the information regarding that particular resource directly here on the schedule board so i'm i'm really stoked about that one as well i think that's that's great that that's been added as well now let's do a little bit of a demo showing you some of those features. So I'm just going to get out of my PowerPoint here. And the first thing I wanted to show you was those resolutions. So you can see here I'm in the field service app and I actually changed this area switcher to settings. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you see here now the option that's been added for resolutions. So here you can just go ahead and create new resolutions, right? You just put in a name and then you can put in a description. Let me actually open up one here. If you look here on incident type resolutions, if I click on that, you can see the, res the incident type that it could be related to. Now, you would probably think, okay, so if I pick that particular incident type, then I'm only going to be able to see those resolutions linked to that incident type. Unfortunately, that is not the way it works today, but that might be something that's going to be added later. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that one as well. So now let's take a look at the mobile app so I can kind of show you what that experience is from the field technician's perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And here is the mobile app. So as you can see, if I scroll down a little bit further, here are my resolutions and you can see here it allows me to very quickly add a new work order resolution so i can just click on that and that brings up this quick create form right i can pick the work order incident from here oh my goodness i don't even know which one that is let me actually go back here so i can 562 let's try that again i'm going to type in the name alarm system installation 562 here it is you can put a customer asset on there and then you can pick a resolution so you can see here it's not filtering out let's just go ahead and say we replace the circuit breaker and then I can just go ahead and save that and even add more resolutions to that right you can see that here if I want to add another one I can do that create a new work order resolution Okay, so now let's go back here and let's open up an account record so I can show you those fields, those address fields that have been nicely cleaned up. So if you scroll down a little bit, I left those quote unquote old fields on there so you can kind of see the difference, right? So they're nice and compact here all together. And then if I click here on edit, this just brings up that form and I can just go ahead and start typing and updating the address directly from within here. Very nice. And obviously 
this is the same over here. If we go, let me go back here to an account record. Let's go ahead to the Taylor household. And here you can see that same control, right? I can very quickly just edit that and then update those address fields. Now let's take a look. Let's go back here to service and take a look at those knowledge articles, right? That's what you see over here, the linked articles. So I can just go ahead and click right over here. Let's go ahead and click on that ellipse. And then you see the add existing knowledge article. So that brings up this search pane. This is great, right? So let's see. Let's type in HVAC search. And you can see here that now I can take a look at articles in my current org production. Nicely SharePoint here as well. And then I can just go ahead and link that article. So let me link it right over here. And you can see that it now says linked to work order. So I can just go ahead and close that out. And then here you also see on their linked articles, the HVAC is not calling article. Now let's take a look at the schedule board updates. I already have that loaded. So here you can see that weekly view, right? And I can even expand that. You can see here all the times and the number of work orders here in the week from January 3rd to 9th. So I can just go ahead and expand that and then I'm gonna be able to see those work orders underneath below those weeks, right? You can see here five hours and eight minutes, two work orders, and that's correct. And I can even see those start times for those work orders as well. We also have the map control. So there's the icon that you see over here. And if I click on that, that will bring up my map. And since I have myself highlighted right now, it shows your route here to this particular location. So I like how they kind of did that and it's now showing a picture of that particular person versus just showing a pin. And then we also have obviously the ability if I click on here, if I right click on there, view resource card, right? So that is back from the legacy schedule board to the new schedule board, which is great. I'm gonna be able to kind of see my skills, send an email, right? Put a chat in there as well. And then I can switch this also for the monthly view. I should have some data. Yep. In January, let's take a look at Allison. If I highlight that eight work orders, 30 hours and 16 minutes, all showing here very nicely. And then we have some additional enhancements and features that are coming in April of 2021 and some of them a little bit later uh, for general availability. As you can see, we're going to have the customer self scheduling preview is going to be in April and that's going to go GA in July of 2020. As of now, remember that the release notes notes are a work in progress, right? Things are constantly changing. So make sure that you actually go online and take a look at those, those updates every now and then. But this is the way it is today. So the self self service scheduling. Now, keep in mind, I don't have a lot of information on this because this was not something I was able to test because it wasn't accessible in the early access. But I think it's good to know that this is something that's coming, right? So this is going to be available from a Power Apps portal and customers will be able to view multiple available slots for the work to be performed, obviously, depending on that resource availability. And they will be able to select a specific time slot to actually schedule the work. 
Then we have the simplifying of work order adoption. And this feature will have a self-guided adoption experience to create work orders. So this means that there's going to be a guided step-by-step -step process that will allow users to quickly create work orders without having to go through the various settings and fields that are required today. Microsoft is kind of trying to simplify some of those core field service tasks in the application. And the Simplify Frontline Worker Setup is also part of that. This is going to be another guided step-by-step -step experience that's going to simplify the setup and the configuration of field service mobile users or resources. So in a few steps, you're going to be able to add users to the system and then create full field service mobile profiles for them as well. The next one I think is pretty exciting. This is going to be appointments data that will be included in resource scheduling. So that means that the scheduling engine will look at a resource bookings and appointments in Dynamics 365 when trying to determine a resource availability. So just like bookings are today, appointments in Dynamics 365 will be considered booking time. So the appointments will also be visible on the schedule board so that dispatchers have full visibility of that. And there's going to be two configuration settings on the appointments syncing feature from Outlook. So there's going to be a global on or off switch. And there's also going to be an on or off switch uh, at the resource level. This is only for obviously for users, right? Because we can't look at, for example, contact type of resources. So this can be obviously enabled or disabled, right? Whenever you want to, uh, to do that or how you need that. And again, this is not an early access, but it's scheduled to be released in April of 2021. Then another thing that is going to be in preview in April right now, we don't know when uh, the GA is going to be. It's currently uh, not available that date, but this is just the ability to integrate Power Virtual agents with the field service mobile app. So I think that that one's going to be pretty cool as well. And then we're going to have the technician locator. And this actually lives inside a Power Apps portal. And you're actually going to be able to send out reminders to your customers. So these could be emails or they could be SMS messages as well. You, you need to make sure that if you want to use SMS, you're going to have to have a provider for this obviously as well. So on the day of the scheduled service, uh, notifications can be sent to the customer. And then you're also going to be able to track that resources progress to the destination in semi real time. Now this feature is actually currently in preview. And I'm going to write a separate article about that. I'm also going to do a separate video on that. So there's going to be some details that are going to uh, come out a little bit later. But this is kind of the screenshot of what that looks like, right? If you actually access this uh, through a tablet or, or through, you know, a PC or laptop. And... Um, you're going to be able to kind of see that little car that you see on the screen move as these guys are driving. So customers are going to be able to, to see that on the screen uh, as well. And then obviously this is the same thing, right? We're just using a mobile application to kind of uh, view that same notification or that same, uh, that same form that you just saw earlier that was on, on a tablet. It just looks a little different again due to the screen real estate. So some pretty exciting things that are uh, coming in this 2021 release wave one. Thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks again, everybody, and stay safe.